So, welcome to Pottery Central. We're ready to do another video for you guys. Um, tonight we're gonna kind of backpedal a little bit because we've been doing some crazy videos with, I don't know, donuts and covered jars and all kinds of crazy stuff. Tonight I want to just show you the raw mechanics of how to pull a cylinder. A lot of people are like, well I can center, but I can't seem to make anything that's tall. Okay, well, it takes practice, obviously, for you to get to a point where you can make something tall, and it's going to take practice in order for you to actually get to a point to where um, it's not going to be a doorstop. So, if you want to make things that are bigger, you want to make things that are taller, you're going to definitely have to practice. So, let me talk real quick about these type of bats here. So, these are creative industry bats. Apparently, they're not supposed to warp, but they do. So, if you have one and it's got a little curve like this, one way you can resolve that is you can stuff a little bit of clay up under there before you put it down on the bat to, to at least keep it from doing the ba 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 thing. Whenever I tell people that when they're using masonite bats, you know, put the hump side or the convex side up. And then everybody's like, convex side, concave, convex. Okay, yeah. So, these three bumps, I call them little braille bumps, um, tell you where these 10 inch centers are. But there we go. And you see, it's not flat, creative industry. It's got a wobble. This clay is high water clay, orange stone. It's a cone 10 clay. And it's got a funky color. That's the only reason I like it. So I'm going to get a little bit of clay off of here and prep my bat. So I'll get this clay and roll it into a coil. This, is, this doesn't have to be like de-aired or, you know, it, but it should be the right consistency. If it's too soft, it's not going to hold my bat in place. This is called elephant ear sponge. So you want to dampen the edge. If you don't dampen the edge, then the clay's not going to stick very well. Push that on there. Three is a good number and almost everything. Rub some clay in there, make it sticky. So if this is too wet, the clay's going to slide around. If it's too dry, it's going to pop right off when you put your power to it. It's going to make that sticky. So I always use the analogy of a melted Jolly Rancher. I bought an 86 IROC from my father-in-law a long, long time ago. And uh, I drove it for a lot of years. It's a really fast car. Not as fast as my Ram, of course, but a really fast car. And um, I thought, well, eventually, someday, I'll leave this to my son. Well, my son never liked the car. It's a Bumblebee IROC, so it's kind of a desirable model. Um, so he recently turned 15, got his driver's permit, we're talking about getting him a car, you know, and all of a sudden he, he comes to the conclusion that, well, maybe the IROC could be my first car. Stop with equal pressure from both hands and a rhythm. And you're trying to align this into like a big Hershey Kiss shape. Seal it. So I'm always sealing on the side going away from me because if I seal over here, it grabs the finger. This is all based in science. So if you're going to uh, shape a pot, you want the clay coming out of your hands. You want your dominant hand on the outside to counter centrifugal force that's going to make it want to come out immediately. So add water, squeeze sides with the heels of your hands, and allow the clay to come up between your hands. So by aligning the clay particles, by squeezing it up into this wheel wedging, we're going to make it easier for me to shape the cylinder. And my goal tonight is not really to make anything, it's really just to show you the mechanics of this. So the mechanics are I'm coating this up to align the clay platelets. I'm going to push forward and down to bring it into a cake shape or a hockey puck or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. 
this is kind of the cake shape here. So we'll call it a cake shape. So you see it's it's pretty much centered. So how would you know if it's centered or not? Well, if you hold your finger a given distance from the center of the wheel and it's not pulling away, and this is actually pulling away a little bit, so it's not perfect. Or if it's bouncing up and down, it's not centered. The original guy that showed me the official way to throw pots was named Art Haney. He was the assistant dean at East Carolina University and he would always cone up at least twice to really align the particles. If you're using a lot of clay or if the clay is kind of stiff, it's a really good idea. Always keep your elbows in close to your body. Ease on, ease off. You want to move your hands really slow. The wheel, when you're centering it especially, should be moving pretty fast. Now, by leaving a gap under my left hand when I'm in this centering configuration, I'm allowing for an escape route for the clay that's uneven to squeeze out under the heel of this hand here. Then I can just simply scrape it off the base. I'll just recycle that clay later. Clay is the cheapest part of this, so if you're stressing out about every little ounce of clay that you're wasting that you can actually wedge and recycle, that's silly. Get over that part because the glaze is and the and the firing, that's where your expense is. Now I'm gonna wet the top and I'm gonna dive straight down. Now a lot of people go, well, how do you know how far to dive? Well you don't until you have experience. You have to create essentially a muscle memory or an ability to judge the thickness without actually knowing the thickness. And one way to do that is to stop the wheel, take your needle tool, and then you'll train yourself as to, well, how thick is it? So I put my finger on the needle like this, slide it into the bottom, put my finger where the clay starts, hold it in place, and I pull it out, and that's, that's plenty might even be too much. Now I'm gonna take my less dominant hand, I'm gonna to pull towards me, flat, to open up the bottom. And I'm just trying to make a straight cylinder here. Now I'm gonna compress the bottom the same way I evened out the top. I'm gonna to start from the outside at three o'clock and move towards the center. So when I talk about positioning on the wheel, this is 12 three, six, and nine. And then when I talk about speed, this is minimal speed, or one, and this is 10. So whenever you're instructing clearly, you need to kind of know a way to tell people what speed or what position their hand should be in. All right, so now we're gonna do our pull. The pull is basically threading the clay up. So if your outside hand's lower, your inside hand's higher, offset the thickness of the bottom, you apply pressure in with your, and really it's just the pads of your fingers. The more surface area that you have contacting the pot, the more water you need, the more water you use, the weaker it gets. So I'm pushing in with my outside fingertips, out with my inside fingertips. I'm moving my hands super slow and threading this clay up. I want to ease off as I get to the top. Hold the sides at four o'clock, compress with the sponge. If you compress the rim every pull, that's a good plan. Um, Robin Hopper shows this te technique to compress the rim where he just hooks his fingers over. He calls that the claw. I had the pleasure of having lunch with him one time. He was a very interesting man. So I'm using my right arm as a lever. I'm touching my right hand with my left hand to keep my fingertips offset the same amount as I'm coming up. I want to ease my pressure as I come up here into the top. So I'm going to show you a couple more things here. Let me do one more pull. Start at the base again, push in that bulge. That's where my inside contact is. So you got 
got a little twist in here. It got a little dry, but that's fine. Let me show you how to fix it. Some metal rib, you can throw a lot drier. The thing about the metal rib is that it's not got any heat and it has no texture. It's stainless steel. So you see all of a sudden that came right out. I'm able to smooth it, no problem. Now if you get a little uneven on the top, that's no problem either. All you gotta do is take your needle tool, support the inside. You may wanna wet your finger, but you gotta support right where the needle comes through. You want to keep the needle parallel to the wheel head and support the whole time as it's coming through. Many revolutions should take that off. I'm going to smooth that rim back out. I'm going to show you the wood knife and then I'm going to show you a little bit of in internal mechanics. So here's the wood knife, flat side against what I want to keep. So it's called a wood knife so everybody's like, let me cut my steak. No, it's wedge it's a wedge in this case so there may be a situation where you're cutting like that but in this case this is a wedge I compare the inside to the outside I keep my eye right on that point and I shave this excess clay right off the base so that's a ton of clay I'm just about to take off with. undercut it either with the needle tool or wood knife depending on the shape of the form if you use your wood knife, sometimes you can push that back up into the pot, and that's not good. Now I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. See if I can just get it a little straighter before I show you guys the, the internal medicine. Anytime you have unevenness in the wall, if you keep a straight, even pull, or use a rib that you can get the, the clay that's uneven to squeeze up to the top, then that gives you an opportunity to cut it off and make the pot perfect. Perfection in pottery is not really this, not really a thing. Um, the imperfection of pottery is actually celebrated um, in Japan, and it's called wabi sabi. Pretty sure that's right. So I'm smoothing this out, trying to get it as straight as possible. And invariably, you're going to see here, it's going to be thinner up in here, thicker down in here. And so technically, I would pull this a little more. But I want to show you guys what's going on with my fingers when I'm pulling. That's the whole point of this video, is that you guys can actually see. Anyway, I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to stretch it out and see what we got in there. And I don't think it's pretty. This is the Cheryl wire, so it's super fancy. Apparently, Mr. Michael Cheryl's a genius, from what I understand. And if nothing else, he uh, has marketed some really nice tools. I, I like really like his ribs and uh, whatnot. He he can. Uh, this is probably common knowledge for a lot of you guys, but uh, Cheryl had uh, manufactured his own. Uh, gravity fed rotating extruder <laughs> hello <laughs> so yeah let's let's definitely figure that he knows a bit about engineering pottery chemistry marketing I need to go take a class so my outside hands lower my inside hands higher and if notice what happens when I apply pressure here and here, even if it's not moving, check this out. I gotta keep them all set, but watch what happens. And then I ease my pressure so that I'm trying to even out the wall more. So compare, you know, it's gone up. However, however higher this is, even without it moving, I'm able to stretch this up by having my fingers all set. And that's how my fingers should be. See how it's forming like an S right there? 
that's what you're shooting for. If you're doing if you're doing this, you're you're creating a thin spot. You're not moving enough clay. It's got to be offset. You want to be a rock star? You need to practice. Thank you for watching our video and have a pleasant evening. And come see us again at Pottery Central.